series 2019, we want to look at different books um, where we are able to just get better. We want to get better. My job is to equip you, okay, to give you the tools um, and skills to be able to walk this life out. Um, And so as we do that together, last week we looked at our finances. And I'm sorry if I ruined your Sunday night, but uh, man, I think I ruined a lot of people's Sunday night. Uh, a, lot, a lot of people were budgeting instead of uh, eating at El Parizo. A lot of people were budgeting instead of heading out and going to get some food. And that's, that's my bad, but you'll be better because of it. And so make sure if you, if you missed last week, look at last week's message. You can check it out on YouTube or, or you can find it on our website and our podcast. And we just talked about finances. We talked about specifically the way that Dave Ramsey sets it up. It's not that he's the best, but he's, someone, he's, a, he's a resource. And if you've got another resource that works for you, awesome. That's amazing. But let's, let's be people who manage our finances well. Debt is not sin, we said last week. Debt is not sin. It's just never encouraged in the Bible. Doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It means that it's just not something that Proverbs speaks very highly of. And so, like, may we just take these things and apply them to our lives. And this week, I want to go through a book and talk about this book called Forgotten God by Francis Chan. It's not the best book on, on the Holy Spirit. It's just a book that we're going to use. It's not the most deep theologically. And so if you're like, man, I really want some meat, this isn't the book for you. You can find something else. But this is a great book in understanding the Holy Spirit. And sometime during the service, we'll give this book away. Or you can find it at our information desk or at viewchurch.co. You can buy it. And we want to give you tools all summer long. So when you will go on vacation and you're sitting in Cabo, you have something to read, or you're, you're, you're going and you're in Lake Chelan because we live in the Northwest and we live on the West side. So where's the West side vacation? Shalanigans, like that's what we do. And so when you go, may you have a book to read. Have you ever been forgotten somewhere? Your parents ever forget you? Raise your hand if your parents have ever forgotten you somewhere. A lot of teenagers, they all raised their hand. Every single one of them was like, yep. Older people are like, maybe. No, no. I, I remember, I'm a pastor's kid, and, and, and so Sundays were, um, like, I'm the youngest, okay? They had, uh, they, they had my older brother, Chad, um, the pretentious one. They had my sister, a little bit older than me. She's three years older than me. She's the thorn. And then they had me, easygoing Kyle. And so, like, the pretentious one, you always know where he is. The thorn, you always know where he is or she is. The, the easygoing one gets forgotten sometimes. And, and I, I, like, being a pastor's kid, you're, you're at the church at, like, 7 a.m. You're leaving at, like, 1 o'clock, and you're starving. And I get I gave up. I gave up on saying, when are we leaving? I gave up on standing next to my dad. I just gave up on it because, so I decided that I would just sleep instead. And so I find myself, you know, you stack the chairs and I'm asleep in, you know, one of the stacks of chairs at church and, you know, and my mom left and my dad left and they got home and they realized our perfect child was left at the church. And it was like, it was like straight out of home alone, you guys. Like, like I woke up and like, it's dark. It's like a, the scariest place in the world is a church when no one else is there. I'll be here and I'll sprint through these hallways. I sp- I'm convinced that someone is out to get me when I'm here by myself. And I remember I was like, hello? Mom? Dad? Like I was Macaulay Culkin all of a sudden. And like, like I was scared out of my mind because the, 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 the final one, the, the finally got it right child, was left at church. They left me at church. It's just the way it worked out. And I think oftentimes many of us are very similar that we find ourselves leaving the Holy Spirit at the church, that we, that we've encountered it, that it's something we really like and like, like, man, but you know what? Oftentimes I notice that Christians leave the Holy Spirit at church. It's something that will be here. It's something that happens here and we are misinformed. We have a difficulty fully understanding what the Holy Spirit is and how he functions and operates in our lives. And may this book be a resource. May other books be, the res- be a resource. May the Bible be a resource. But may our time together be a resource that we understand the third part of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. And it looks like this. God the Father, may, he loves me. Okay? God the Father, he loves me. God the Son, God the Son, he saves me. But, but, God, but God the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit is with me. But notice the operative word here, it's God. And oftentimes we compartmentalize our relationship with God into creator, son, and the Holy Spirit. 
And we're really okay maybe with the top two, but we don't quite understand the bottom one. But you've got to know that God is the Father and God, He is the Son and God is the Holy Spirit who is with me. So when you're wondering what the Holy Spirit does, His main function, His purpose is to be with you. God, He's in heaven. Jesus, He's in heaven. The Holy Spirit is with us. He's the one that we probably should learn the most about because he's the one who was with us and guiding us. Over 800 times Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost are mentioned in the Bible. The Bible is written in three different languages, Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic, predominantly in Hebrew and Greek. And, and, and the Holy Spirit would be translated to a breath of fresh air. And in Hebrew, it's this word called ruach. Everyone say ruach. But you gotta like, you gotta like, like you own a cat and like you're... I don't understand cat people. Notice what, what, what animal in the Bible doesn't get mentioned making it to heaven? Cats. <laughs> okay, so everybody, ruach. It doesn't mean they're bad. They're probably not going to heaven. Like, ruach. It's this a win. So many people are offended now. Like, I knew it. Tried this church out. It sucked. He started making fun, started making fun, of, started making fun of cats. Um, a wind, breath, a violent exaltation, blast of breath. Like, that is what the Holy Spirit is. When you look at this conversation and what the Hebrew has defining this word, it's wind, it's breath, it is with us. Uh, the Greek would translate it to this word called pneuma. Everyone say pneuma. Pneuma, a current of air, a blast of breath, a strong breeze. I imagine that the Holy Spirit's got good breath. I imagine the Holy Spirit's like, it's not like coffee breath. You ever been prayed for in church and you're like, please stop praying for me, you have coffee breath? Like, like, like there are people who will pray for you and they're like breathing in your face and you're like, you've got to, I can't understand what you're saying. Like, if you ever have coffee breath and you're praying for someone, pray past them. Pray, pray like in their ear so that your bad breath goes beyond them, not into their soul, because then when they're receiving it, they'll be like, please stop praying for me, I can't hear you. I don't know if anybody else has this experience, but... That's just what it is. Like, imagine the Holy Spirit's got good breath. Like, banaka breath. Like, just brush his teeth. Like, I had the Holy Spirit probably gargles. And, like, you know, has that moment where, like, okay, now I can pray for people. But I am convinced. I'm convinced that the most desperate thing in your life, the, the thing that I am desperate for you, not, thing, not something that I hope, like, man, man, this could happen. I am desperate for you, for our church, for Christianity to be led by the Holy Spirit. I'm desperate for the Holy Spirit to be leading your home to be leading your lives, to be leading everything that you do. We need to be desperate for this moment that the Holy Spirit is guiding us. And I think oftentimes we find ourselves where the Holy Spirit isn't leading us. Out of fear, it won't. You ever that moment, you talk to God, and you're like, do this, and then nothing happens? You have this fear of disappointment, this fear of letdown, this fear that it's not going to happen to me. I think another reason why we find ourselves where the Holy Spirit doesn't lead us, this fear that he's going to lead us to do something that we don't want to do. Do you know a missionary in Africa who hates it? People who are on the mission field are obsessed with it. They love it. People who serve God in the areas that they're passionate about love it. Don't be worried that God's going to ask you to do something you don't want to do. Know that he's going to call you to do things that he'll put passions inside of you. See, oftentimes we rely on the passions of our life. Who gives you passion? God. So as he provides, he can take away and move in our lives. And so as, he's not going to ask you to do something you don't want to do. It might be uncomfortable. Don't, 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 don't get me wrong. There's uncomfortability. That doesn't mean you don't get to not do it. This is why many of us don't work out because we find that moment we start to get uncomfortable. You're like, I could probably. I mean, I used to work out the YMCA all the time. And the moment I got kind of sweaty and uncomfortable, I was like, I'm probably good. And I just like would just leave all of a sudden. And then I started doing CrossFit, and the entire time I'm uncomfortable. I've never left it and thought, you know what, I crushed it today. Every single time I leave, I think, why do I pay for this? This is terrible. This is a horrible experience. Like, like uncomfortable is good for us. It's not going to lead you to something. You're just like, I don't want to do that, God. And I think... Another reason why we don't rely on the Holy Spirit to lead our lives is because we find ourselves at a place we're afraid of what other people will say. 
For what, what would other people say? What would other people do? What, what, they think I'm so different. They think I, I'm weird. That, 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 that I, far too often do we allow humanity to dictate our actions instead of allowing God to lead our direction. Far too often do we allow humanity to dictate our direction and our actions instead of allowing God to determine the steps and the path that we have for our lives. And even many of us, as we come to church, I, I, I don't know if you know this, realize I go, I go to church a lot. I go to a lot of conference. I do a lot of worship. I do a lot of church. I hear quite a bit. I take vacation. I still go to church. I typically teach at churches when I'm on vacation. And oftentimes I find myself at a place where I assume to know what's going to happen. That I wake up in a day and I assume to know what God's going to do that day. That you came in today and you're like, okay, we're going to do that worship thing. I'm going to drop my kids off. Or you don't have kids and you just, you came in, you worship for a little bit. And we're going to do some highlights. And, and Kyle's going to teach and we're going to leave. And then we're going to argue about like wh- wh- whether we're going to go out to eat afterwards. Or we need to eat at home. Like no one wants to eat leftovers on a Sunday afternoon. But we know financially we really probably should. But Snowhunch Bakery sounds way better. Like, like this is like the tension that you live in. But maybe you go to Molt B and then you order the cinnamon roll. And it's just way too big. But it's so dang good. Like, like. This is what happens when really, like, if you think about it, a a predictable relationship with God doesn't sound much of a relationship with God. Because I don't notice moments of the Bible where we read Bible stories and it's like, yeah, you know, Moses sought out to be a lawyer and ended up being a lawyer. Like Moses never wrote the plans for his life. Abraham never wrote the plans for his life. Sarah never wrote the plans for her life. Esther never wrote the plans for her life. But as God spoke, they followed. And it changed the course of not only their lives, but it changed the course of history. And how often that we're so predetermined in what's going to happen our day that when God speaks, we stay on our path instead of what God has for our lives. And I think oftentimes it comes from a place that we just don't know what who the Holy Spirit is, what God is, what's he going to do in our lives. I think many of us are like this verse in Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 2. It says, while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some some disciples. So he found disciples, which would mean be translated followers of Jesus. Like they've accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They're followers of Jesus. And he asked them this question. He asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, I think very similarly to many people, is no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Maybe you've heard, but maybe you don't know. I would say, man, let's learn then. Never do we graduate from attending so much to stop learning about the things of God. Never do we find ourselves in a place where we stop learning, we stop growing. We always want to be learning. Man, even yesterday, I was in the car with my, my kids, and Boston goes, Beckham asked him a question, and Boston goes, oh, I know everything about that. Well, and it's such a great teaching moment to just look at him and say, yeah, buddy, you do know a lot about that. But do you know everything? He goes, Yeah. So no, you don't. You might know a lot, but you don't know everything. You can always learn. Length of Christianity doesn't create knowing everything. We can always be learning. So I think the first question I asked today, who is he? Who is the Holy Spirit? Who is he in our life? And I think you've got to know this first and foremost, that the Holy Spirit, he is God. He's God. Uh, Someone said to me the other day, like, oh, you pastor that church. I was like, I don't know what that means. They're like, you pastor View Church. I was like, yeah, I pastor View Church. Like, you're one of those Holy Spirit churches. Like, you believe in the Holy Spirit? Like, you guys move in the Holy Spirit? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, kind of like, kind of like talking trash about it. And I was, and like, or like, like kind of, you could tell they're bad mouthing it. And they're, and I, my response instantly was like, yes, we believe in God. Because oftentimes we compartmentalize the areas of God instead of allowing God just to be God, that if he's a part of the Trinity, he's a part of the Godhead. He is God. You've got to understand that he is God. It's not just other thing of God. I mean, oftentimes we find ourselves at a place where like, man, God, the creator, love him. Cool with that. Jesus died for me. Love it. Cool with that. Holy Spirit, don't know about it. Kind of weird. I'm not into it. We stop ourselves at places that God wants us to make those next steps in our lives to speak to us and to guide us. Acts chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. It says, Then Peter said to Ananias, 
How is it that Satan so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit? It goes on further, it says, you have not lied to men, you have lied to God. We don't realize the severity of these moments. We don't realize that we're lying to God. We're lying to these actions. And Peter's not calling Ananias and Sapphira out because he's lying to humanity. He's calling them out because he's lying to God in that moment. And oftentimes we forget this part of the Trinity. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 puts it this way. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and that other part of the Trinity I don't understand. No, it's if the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit leading our lives, guiding our lives, I think another thing to know, who is he? He's, he's God. You know what he's not? The Holy Spirit's not weird. I think that's like one of the most important things you got to understand. Like the Holy Spirit's not going to give you the heebie-jeebies, not going like, to like, like weird you out. You know what's weird? People. People are weird. I was at a church one time, and we were, um, we were, we, we were like worshiping, and this lady in the front row started screaming in tongues. She started Shandaba, like she started like yelling out, came in a Honda, left in a chair, left in a Mazda. She started going for it. And the pastor was like, you be quiet. I was like, oh, sweet Jesus, we're about to get some of that. Like, I didn't know what to do. She was like, he goes, you be quiet. That's not from you. That's not from the Lord. That's from you. And I was like, oh, you know why that moment was weird? Because she made it weird. Not because God made it weird. Speaking in tongues isn't weird. Doing things. Like, the Holy Spirit's not going to all of a sudden, like, you you get filled with the Holy Spirit. Like, oh, great. Now i got to buy a shofar and get some flags. Like, all of a sudden, you just start running around the church and be like, hallelujah. Like, all of a sudden, you're like, I used to be friends with them, but they got a flag. I mean, we're, like, having dinner. I was like, hold on. I got to go. Like, whoa, like, what is happening? And if you don't know what a shofar is, don't worry. We don't have a. But it's not going to make you weird. People, people make God weird. People make the Holy Spirit weird. When they make it all, never is the Holy Spirit about you. It's always to edify the church. It's always to grow the church. It's always to empower his people. It's never about you. You don't speak in tongues and interpret it so that all of a sudden be like, oh, wow, I'm amazing because I interpret it. You speak in tongues and interpretation to edify the church, to encourage the church, to move in those things with the church. I preached at a conference one time, and one of their slogans was, no weird stuff. Man, I want to be at a place where it's at, like, I think to me that says we're going to be as cookie cutter normal as possible, but I don't want to go into predictable Sunday. I want to go into Holy Spirit driven Sundays. I don't want to follow a run sheet that says, you know what, Courtney, you can't, so, you know what, Becca, don't share a word just because God spoke to you, you know, get, no, if God speaks, we move. God guides us, and it's no different than even walking into this service. The Holy Spirit's not weird. It makes it draw attention to ourselves. John 16, verse 7 puts it this way. But I tell you the truth. It is for your good. Jesus' like, final words, he's letting us know that it's, it's good that he leaves. Because he's going to give us the Holy Spirit. He says that I'm going away unless I go away. The counselor, a.k.a. the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. It's amazing that Jesus says these words, that it's better for him to go than to stay. And if Jesus thought the Holy Spirit was good, I know that it is good for us. It is good to lead our lives. And I think the third thing, who is he? He's God. He's not weird. He's my best friend. Anybody looking for a friend? He's my best. Who grew up with an imaginary, imaginary friend that you talked to? Come on, raise your hand. Be, yeah, yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's, what I'm t- that's not surprising. I knew that. Yeah, that's yeah, not surprising either. Like, like, I, like, you have that moment where, like, you're talking to, like, your best friend, and your best friend's, like, this, like, imaginary character, and you're, like, hanging out, and, like, that's what it is. Like, like, imagine being filled with the Spirit, and, like, you're praying for people. Like, have you ever prayed for people while you were driving, but no one else is in the car? You're talking, and you're, like, talking to God. People in the car next to you are, like, yep. I'm getting away from this person. They're crazy. Like, 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 if I see someone praying in the car, I'm like, uh-uh. I'm gonna like, give them four car lengths. I don't know what they're about to do next. Like, like, he's your best friend. He's your best friend because he's there for you, because he's with you, because he's guiding you, because he loves you. Because best friends look after their friends. But when life's difficult, when life's really good, who do you call? 
You call your best friend. Don't say Ghostbusters. <laughs> I knew it, you stinkers. I knew it. Like, all of a sudden, I heard all this whispering. I was like, Ugh. You call your best friend. Because your best friend can comfort you. Your best friend can counsel you. Your best friend can be an advocate for you. Your best friend can be a helper. You know, all those are words that describe and are translated to who the Holy Spirit is. Your best friend is the Holy Spirit because he's with you, because he's guiding you, because he loves you, because he cares about you. Now, I look at my best friend. There's characteristics that I, I, I want, that I need. And Jesus has this moment where he gives characteristics of who the Holy Spirit is. John chapter 13 through 16 goes from Jesus' final meal with his disciples to when he's arrested. So there's this walk that they go on to the Garden of Gethsemane. And on that walk, he spends three chapters that John gives us when he has this final conversation with the, with the disciples and he talks for three chapters about the Holy Spirit. I think that if it was really important to be able to share with the disciples his final conversation, his final walk with the disciples, it's really good for us to be able to learn what these are. And there's four main things that he says to them. He says the first thing he tells them in John chapter 14, verse 16, he says, he will be with you. So as your best friend, you know what he's devoted to? You know what he's going to do? He's going to be with you. The Bible uses this word in Greek called omnipresent. It means that he's everywhere. He's everywhere. He is with us. He is guiding us that God is walking with us. He is with you. That, that, that if that's the quality of a friend, I want to be friends with that. I want to be with that. John chapter 14, verse 16, where we get this, says this. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor, the Holy Spirit, to be with you. That Jesus was an advocate for us to go to God, to give us the Holy Spirit, so that the Holy Spirit would be with us. Greek, the translation for this counselor would be this paracletus. And as this word, it means to be with us on our hip. So he is called to be with us. That the word used to describe the Holy Spirit is defined to be called to be with us. His purpose is to be with us. You can't shake him. You can't do any, You can't get rid of him. He wants to be with you. He wants to walk with you. He wants to walk with you and be with you. I think we got to know this. Um, uh, Marriage opened my eyes. Mar- marriage is like one of those like like marriage like marriage is one of those things that like really opened my like like I thought I had some things together and I thought toilet paper is supposed to come from the bottom not the top and I thought that cast iron was the only thing you cook on because I'm Mexican not like 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 I thought and I got married and like like blonde like white girl came into my life and I was like we different we we do like 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 I I, I remember like like. Like having like, now we have towels for people who don't live with us. I can't use them. They're called guest towels. Listen, if I bought it, I'm using this. Like it is very simple how my finances work. Like, like I bought it. I mean, no, this is for the guests. Be my guest. Like, like I'm a guest. Like, like oh my word. Like, it's not a, I remember one time she was like, I need to buy a comforter. I need to buy a comforter. I was like, all right, yeah, baby, baby girl, you get a comforter. I know you need a second mortgage to buy a comforter. Sweet Lord, why are they so expensive? She goes out and buys the comforter. I was like, all right, there's no spending for the rest of the month. She buys the comforter, and we get the comforter. And like, like I, I, the first night that we got the comforter, she was gone, and I slept in it. And I, I, sl- I, I may as, I, it's, it's like I took melatonin. I slept. That comforter laid on me. I was like, oh. like I was dead to the world. Woke up the next day like, oh. Like, I loved it. Next night, she comes home, and I'm crawling into bed, and, and, and she's already in bed. She's, like, reading in bed. And we're early in marriage, so you, like, did stuff like that. And, and like, like, like she, um, she pulled the comforter off the bed. I was like, what are you doing? And she goes, oh, no, we don't sleep with that. <laughs> what? What do we do with it? It's just for these pe- the pillows. Don't put your head on those pillows. Pillows are for looks. What? What did I buy? Who are you? Premarital did nothing. They didn't talk about this kind of stuff. I, I, I think 
it's just for looks, it's just for show, it's not something that we use. I think so often our relationship with, with the Holy Spirit is just for show. It's just not, it's not something we use. Holy Spirit for today? Oh, it's not prevalent. Speaking in tongues? No way. Only weird people do that. Only that church does that. I mean, out of healing people? Oh my gosh, no, 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 no. We just, we just believe that, you know, they, they got sick and that's just what's going to happen. No, we believe in healing. We believe in prophecy. We believe in prophetic words. We are going to use the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is with us and guiding us because he's our best friend. He wants to be with us and guiding us and be used by that. And far too often do we get so obsessed with God the Creator and Jesus the Son that we should be, but we miss out on the things of the Holy Spirit to be leading our lives. We don't use it. Comforter is purchased to be used. Towels are purchased to be used. That's just as simple as that. He's our best friend. And as he does that, he's going to be with you. It's what best friends do. Best friends are with you. But best friends, they also, they, 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 they'll tell you things that you need to know. The Holy Spirit's going to reveal the Bible to you. You ever have that moment where you're reading the Bible? And you're like, man, I never noticed that before. You know what that moment is not? That moment is not, I'm getting mature. I'm finally growing in the ways of the Lord. Finally figured things out. No, that's the Holy Spirit saying, you know what? I want to speak this to your life right now. I want to pull this out right now. I want this to be something that you focus on right now. It has nothing to do about your spiritual maturity and has everything to do about his voice. He wants to reveal the Bible to you. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said. If the Bible wrote it, it's for you. The Bible, if you read it, it's for you. It's to change your life. It's to speak to you. And the Holy Spirit's going to be the one to reveal those truths to us. So he's your best friend. And he's going to be with you. He's going to reveal the Bible to you. I think other things that he's going to do, that that he's going to be, is he will help you share Jesus with others. The Holy Spirit's going to help you share share Jesus to others. Far too often is this like the scariest thing of Christianity. I got to talk to somebody about him. I don't even, what am I going to say? I remember when I was in high school, my freshman year in high school, my best friend was in uh, English high. You ever had this moment when you were in school? I, I, I you know, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll admit it, I did. And like, I remember walking to class and everybody's got like a piece of paper out. And I'm like, what is that? They're like, we got a test today. I'm like, we've got a test today? Like, is it tomorrow? Like, no, no, it's today. I'm like, when did we find out? They're like, two weeks ago. I'm like, what? Have we talked about it? Like yesterday. Are you sure? Like, yeah, and the day before. I'm like, I don't think so. Like, you know, it's just like a nerve-wracking moment where all of a sudden everybody's like studying the same thing, like cramming for this moment. I'm like looking around like, I don't know what to do. Like, what's going to happen? And my best friend looks at me and goes, don't worry, you can just copy off mine. And I was like, oh, crisis averted. I don't encourage cheating. But in my previous life, it worked for me. I looked over at his paper and was like, this is easy. Oh, that's a great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got done and I turned it in. I remember even thinking to myself, man, I did pretty good. I'm, pretty, I'm a pretty smart guy. Like, I, I really, things are on the up for me. And so often we think that our lives, that sharing Jesus is all about your knowledge and your truth and your guidance and the things that you know. But sharing Jesus, the Holy Spirit will always speak through you. The Holy Spirit will always guide you. The Holy Spirit will always be something that gives you the words to say. And if you've ever done it before, you know that moment where you're like, oh man, I don't know how I said that. I don't know what came out, but I shared things I didn't even know that I knew. John chapter 15, verse 20. 26 puts it this way. It says, when the counselor comes from whom I sent, I will send you, I will send you to, I will send to you from the Father. The Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. The Holy Spirit that lives inside of you will always testify the truths of who Jesus is. And it's not about you. You don't walk into heaven someday and all of a sudden it's like, whoo, Jeff. Man, this guy, 17 salvations, Jesus Louise. And all of a sudden, Daniel walks in, and it's like, two. 
I mean, you tried really hard, I guess. No, it has nothing. You don't save people. Jesus does. And the Holy Spirit speaks through you to get those salvations, to be able to lead people. It is never about you. It is always about others. It is always about his truths and his guidance. And he will testify through us. But oftentimes, as the Holy Spirit leads us, we deny or ignore. Well, I don't want to talk to a stranger. I think speaks volumes about your heart. I mean, what are people going to say? I think thinks volumes about our hearts. Yeah, it's scary. Let's be honest, that moment is kind of, it is weird. Because it's not normal in our culture to walk up to other people and to care about strangers. But if that's weird, make me a weirdo. I, I, I want people to know him. Because knowing him means they're going to heaven. Knowing him stops generational sin. Knowing him stops moments of, uh, of just lost identity and leads to purpose. The final thing of him being your best friend, that he'll guide you through life. And one of the biggest things we care about here is your purpose. You knowing Jesus, but discovering your purpose. What's your purpose in life? Why are you here? What are you doing? John chapter 16, verse 13 puts it this way. It says, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. And he will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. This passage is Jesus is finishing his pretty much final moments with his disciples. Saying, you know what the Holy Spirit's going to do? He's going to guide you into all truth. He's going to guide you into a future. He's going to open up doors you never thought would open. He's going to tell you things you never thought that you could understand. Because we don't serve God the Father who is into abandoning his children. You think back to Genesis when Adam and Eve are in the garden and the serpent deceives them. They take a bite from this fruit, this apple. Their eyes are open to sin. Depravity enters the world. Sin comes into the world. They realize that they're naked and they clothe themselves in leaves. God comes and he looks for them and they're hiding because they're embarrassed. When they meet face to face with God, God doesn't look at them and say, my word, that's it. I hate you guys. I'm done with you. There's consequences for actions. And he reveals what those are going to be. But right after that, you know what he does? He provides their need. He gives them leather to wear. That would mean that he sacrificed an animal and gave them something that would last a lifetime. You know what, you know what a leaf's going to do? It's going to shrivel up and die. But God gave them something greater than they could ever create for themselves. Because he's not into abandoning humanity. He's into providing for humanity. Fast forward, Jesus is 33 years old and humanity kills him. God doesn't step back and say, wow, geez Louise, guys, are you kidding me? You're the worst. That's it. I'm out. I'm going to go do something new. He says, you know what they need right now? They need me to perform a miracle to bring my son back from the dead. Because if Jesus just dies on a cross and doesn't come back, he's a piece of history. But if he raises from the dead, he's a miracle. That's what changes everything. Not only am I going to give them Jesus, 
I'm going to give them the Holy Spirit. And then, then he gives us the local church. He gives community. He gives this. He gives friendship. See, when the Holy Spirit leads our lives, it looks much like walking with God. It's this moment where all of a sudden you realize God's not into abandoning humanity. He's always about providing for us. He's always about giving. And I, I'm desperate for the Holy Spirit to lead my life. I'm desperate for the Holy Spirit to lead this church. In our time together, I pray and I pray and I pray that we'd all be desperate for the Holy Spirit to lead our lives. We don't know everything. God's opening doors. I want to I wanna have the faith to walk through them. When God's opening up moments and opportunities, I want to have faith to walk through them. 